My name is Deborah Burlingame. My brother was Charles Chick Burlingame, the pilot of American Airlines Flight 77, which crashed at the Pentagon on September 11, 2001. I am one of the co-founders of the campaign we formally announced today, 9-11, Never Forget Us, whose mission is to stop President Obama, Attorney General Eric Holder, and members of Congress from bringing sworn enemies of the United States into this country and from bringing war criminals captured on the battlefield, lawfully held as war detainees into civilian court. It doesn't have to happen. Two weeks ago, 309-11 family members sent a letter to the President telling him we adamantly oppose this foolish, dangerous, and unnecessary act. The letter was never acknowledged. One hour after the Attorney General made his stunning announcement that unlawful foreign combatants would be tried as civilians in, in federal court, the number of signers to that letter jumped to 45,000. That was in one hour. By the end of the day, the number of signers was 100,000. Our internet server couldn't handle the volume of Americans who had somehow found out about this letter and wished to stand with us. That was the genesis of this movement. Just as they did eight years ago, the American people are standing with us again. Attorney General Eric Holder has suggested that those who oppose prosecuting these men here in New York City are afraid that we don't have the courage to face Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. What I say is how dare Mr. Holder, who didn't have the decency to notify victims' families of his decision to bring these monsters here, how dare him tell us that we lack courage. Courage is carrying on after watching your loved ones die in real time, knowing that they burned to death, were crushed to death, or jumped from 100 flights high. Courage is carrying on, even as we waited, in some cases, years to bury something of our loved ones. More than 1,100 families still wait. How dare Mr. Holder suggest that the firefighters who oppose this trial need to man up and let KSM mock their brother firefighters in the country's most ma magisterial setting a federal court. Mr. Holder, courage was going into those burning buildings that day knowing that they might not come out alive. Courage is digging for nine months on their hands and knees breathing in toxic smoke to find the ravaged remains of their brother firefighters, police officers, citizen responders, and office workers. This was courage not summoned from false bravado, but which sprang from an abiding love of their fellow human beings and their sense of obligation to them, their families, and their beloved country. Mr. Holder has glibly and most insensitively called the perverse spectacle that he wants to invite on this city and the nation the trial of the century. Well, Mr. Attorney General, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed has put you on notice. He's going to give it to you. We, the families, the first responders, and those members of the U.S. military, the people who patrol your streets, rescue your citizens, and fight your wars. We understand what you do not. This trial will be jihad, will be, this trial will be lawyer-assisted jihad. This trial will be lawyer-assisted jihad in the courtroom. We understand that jihad is more than spilling American blood. It is forcing us to change our lives, divert our limited resources, forgo the luxury of boarding an airplane unabused. We spend hundreds of millions of dollars 
when we spend hundreds of millions of dollars on rooftop snipers, Kevlar vests, and armored vehicles, that's jihad. When we barricade our buildings, lock down our streets, and close our transportation systems, that's jihad. When, when we grant a confessed war criminal access to platinum due process, so that he can use it to rally his fellow terrorists to kill more of our citizens and to target our military, that's jihad. Mr. Attorney General, it doesn't have to happen. You call the military commission system, quote, lawful, fair, and effective, and that they are, quote, consistent with our highest standards as a nation. We agree, and we think it's far more than they deserve. And now I'd like to turn the microphone over to Congressman Pete King. He is from the 3rd District right here in New York. He is a member of uh, the ranking member of the uh, House Homeland Security Committee and a member of the Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. I'd also like to say that Pete King is a man who has been with us since from day one on 9-11. Uh, with the f first responders and the families and our military. He is an independent guy who is a voice of reason and common sense, and I like to think that he doesn't represent, represent simply uh, New Yorkers, but all of America. Here's Pete. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, Deborah, and let me thank you and Tim Brown for all the work you put in in organizing this. Let me thank uh, Andy McCarthy, who's going to be speaking, who is uh, the resident scholar on this issue and who has been on the front lines of fighting jihad in the courtrooms and also uh, Peter Regan and his family who have gone through so much and all the organizations who are here today. Pre the, the Obama holder decision to grant civilian rights to the Guantanamo detainees is perhaps the most dangerous decision any president and any attorney general have ever made. This is a decision that has no basis in logic, in law, or morality. We are changing the rules of the war. We are now saying that those captured as enemy combatants in the battlefield are entitled to civilian due process. They are in many ways entitled to more rights than our own soldiers would be. Uh, we are going to be opening up so many avenues for terrorists as far as giving them access to our intelligence, allowing them to use the courtroom as a forum and of course putting incredible undue stress and strain and raising the level of security here in the city of New York at cost, as Deborah said, of tens and tens of millions of dollars. And this is part of a pattern by this administration when it comes to not fighting the war in the right way against terrorism. It starts with ordering the closure of Guantanamo. It talks with beginning, it starts with the uh, talk of prosecuting or investigating the CIA interrogators, the men and women who kept us safe for all these eight years. And now this decision to bring Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and others to New York by not putting them on trial before military tribunals is conferring a constitutional status on them which they don't deserve and which is going to be very harmful to the United States. But again, to me, the largest issue of all, despite all the others, is the fact that we have now gone back to September 10th. We have said that we are going to treat this as a law enforcement issue, not as a matter of war. These enemy combatants are entitled to none of these rights. And I say, well, you know, what is the soldier going to do in Afghanistan who captures someone in Al-Qaeda, knowing that an attack may be imminent, knowing that that person may know where bin Laden is? Is he allowed to question him? Is he allowed to interrogate him? Or does he have to read him his rights? Does he have to make sure that all the evidence is uh, carefully put together so that somewhere in the future he can be put on trial here in the Southern District of New York or the Northern District of Virginia or wherever? This is, again, an administration which has turned its back, I believe, in an effective fighting of the war against terrorism, has taken its back to September 10th. And we think back to September 10th, remember what happened on September 11th. We said we would never go through that again. We will never repeat those mistakes. Unfortunately, I believe we are mistaking them more and more and more. So with that, I uh, just urge everyone to be at the rally on December 5th, to let the Attorney General and the President know, to let them know clearly and uh, without any doubt at all that New York and the nation are opposed to these trials. We're opposed to what they, the status they are conferring on the mass murderers of our generation. And with that, I want to thank everyone who's here today and everyone who I know is going to be here on December 5th. Thank you all and God bless you.